Hi, my name is John Rinaldi, and here I am at the Video Operations Center that we built just to do these videos at real-time automation. Here in Brookfield, Wisconsin, which for those of you who are geographically challenged, is right on the big lake, Lake Michigan, the biggest freshwater lake in the entire world. So we're going to talk about Modbus today. Modbus RTU specifically. Before we get into that, let me talk about a little background thing that a lot of people who call me are confused about. And what that is, is Modbus is a serial communications protocol. What does serial mean? It means bit by bit. There's, there's serial RS-485, and there's, there's serial RS-232. Now what's the difference between 485 and 232? 232 uses three wires, a transmit, there's a transmit wire, receive wire, and a comm wire. TX, RX, and common. And then the T on the other side, you have an, an RX, a TX, and a common. So, so this device transmits on the TX line. This device transmits on this TX line over to the RX on the other side. So you can, have, you can actually have full duplex communications and sending bits in both directions at the same time. Because of that, this is point to point. You've got one device here, one device there. And I lost my, my eraser. Here we go. Now, RS-485 is differential. You just have two wires with RS-485, and it put, but the difference in, in the potentials between the wires indicates what the bits are. So when data is going, this guy can send data in that direction by putting a potential between those two wires. This guy sends, it, sends it, a, a, a message going back the other way by putting a potential in those two wires. So the line has to be turned around from the sender to the receiver when the receiver wants to re send a reply. So that's the background on RS-485. So Modbus RTU is an RS-485 protocol. A lot of people ask me, can I do, can I do Modbus RTU and RS-232? Well, yeah, you can if you just have two nodes. Then you're fine. Now, Modbus RTU, what does the RTU mean? RTU means remote terminal unit. Does that mean anything to us? Well, not really. It just distinguishes it between the TCP version of Modbus. Same packet, same data, same everything, only this goes in an Ethernet packet, this just goes out as serial bits on RS-485. So, first thing to talk about is, number one, why Modbus RTU? Well, Modbus RTU has been around since, like, Columbus came to America. I think Columbus had it on Santa Maria. The, why, why is it, why is it around so, why is it, and it's been in, it's in everything. There's probably hundreds and hundreds of thousands of nodes that have Modbus and Modbus RTU specifically, because all you need is a serial port and, a, and an RS-485 driver to make your device a Modbus RTU device. So it's been used in everything, and it's a very simple packet, as I'll show you in a minute. So a lot of people have implemented. So that's why it's important to you, is because if you implement Modbus RTU, then you can also talk to this, to this wide variety of devices that speak Modbus RTU. That's the first thing. Number two, is that we have to remember it's serial 485. So when we're talking about RTU, that always means serial 485, which I just explained is a differential line, and it's multi-dropped. With serial Modbus RTU, you've got one master, and you've got a whole bunch of slaves. Slave, 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 slave. The master puts out a message, the slave that it's directed to receives that message and responds, and then the master talks to a different slave. So it's just continuous messaging from the master out to the slaves with the slaves responding. A slave that doesn't get talked to has to shut up. It can't say anything because there's only two lines here and only one device can talk at a time. That's why you can't have multiple masters. Another question many people ask. Can we have multiple masters? No, never. Uh, in Modbus TCP you can, not here. So that's another thing you have to pay. Third thing that we want to know about Modbus. Data representation. Data rep. How is data represented in Modbus? Two ways, either as registers and coils. What are we talking about data representation anyway? Whenever you have any kind of network device, everybody wants to know is how do I talk to that device? How does the, how does the data, how do I access the data in that device? Whether it be some kind of I.O. lines, whether it can be some kind of analog single, analog value like a temperature, uh, whether it's going to be something like is the status of a valve. Well, 
in Modbus, things are represented in two ways, by 16-bit unsigned registers and by single-bit coils. And so every device has some set of registers and some set of coils. Could have both, could have one, could have the other. Doesn't matter. It's up to the designer of the device to just pick. The other thing that they pick is so. Uh, the other thing that they pick is the data space, which which leads us to the next very important point on Modbus: is how is data organized in that? Well, they figure out they they allocate some sort of memory inside a device when you're de uh, designing a Modbus RTU device that this is going to be my register area, this is going to be my coil area, and I'm going to start this at say 300. I'm going to have 100 registers, so this is going to be 399. So it's up to the designer to say that I'm going to have this register space. I'm going to have 100 uns unsigned registers. Now, there's two kinds of registers. There's actually input registers, which come back from the old days when, when this was for PLCs and you had I.O. coming into a PLC, and so these were actually like analog inputs. And you have holding registers, which are nothing more than, than internal, internal registers. Same thing with coils. We've got status coils, which just say, "Hey, what's the what's the value? Well, you know, what's the current state of this coil?" Or you've got input coils. Input coils are are actually almost like field input, can be field inputs, but people are free nowadays because we don't not tied to I/O all the time to use these in any way they want. So also for registers and coils, you can define the coils. You've got actually 64k of space that you can allocate for input registers, holding registers, input coils, status coils, whatever you want. So you've got a lot of space, but most people just take a small segment of it because they've got very small amounts of data and say, I want to, I want to use 10 registers. I'm going to start it at this, at this point at this point and end at this point. Now that's, the, that's real simple, but it's also the biggest downfall of Modbus. Downfall because every device is different. This designer picked this representation. Another designer doing the same kind of thing will pick a totally different representation. He'll use 50,000 as the address for 10 registers. This guy used 300 for the address of 100 registers. So nothing matches, meaning if you've got to switch from one Modbus device to the next, you've got to reprogram your system. Okay. Uh, now, let's take a look at what's the packet look like. Pack it's very simple. You just generally have an ID for the device. You have an you have some kind of function code, an address, and a date and data. So the pack is really simple. This is just says here's the the address of the slave on the on the network. Here's the code of what I want to do. What can you do? Basically four things. You can read a register, write a register, read a coil, write a coil. Uh, and here's the address of where of the data register that I want to use. And if I'm doing a write, here's the data. Then there's a CRC out here, cyclic redundancy check. That thing gives you about 99.996% 90, accuracy if you do the CRC right. A lot of people when they're implementing Modbus, they do that wrong, they start with the wrong seed. So this is another reason that Modbus is, is used in so many devices because you just create this packet, you send it out, you've got a master. If you can, if you receive the pack, if you can receive this packet from the from a master, you can interpret it correctly, send a response back in the right format. You've implemented Modbus. We've got Modbus stacks. If you don't want to go through that, that are guaranteed to work, and it might be a better way for you to go. Now, if you need more information on Modbus RTU, Modbus TCP, or any of us, you can call. Our office is here at Real-Time Automation. We'll be glad to help you. We've got lots of device converters that convert Modbus RTU to things like Ethernet IP, DeviceNet, Profibus, all sorts of stuff. We've got, we've got source code stacks that run on any kind of processor and any kind of uh, operating system. Uh, so we've got everything that you need to do Modbus. We'll be glad to work with you. My name is John Rinaldi, and it's been a pleasure talking to you today.